Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Honorable Minister Imran Khan, the Prime Minister of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, distinguished Mr. Shahmud Qureshi, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, distinguished Mr. Hussein Ibrahim Taha, Secretary General of OSC, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, on behalf of the Asian Group of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation and on behalf of the delegation of Kazakhstan, allow me to express appreciation to the government of Pakistan for the cordial hospitality and excellent arrangement of today's OIC ministerial meeting, titled Partnership for Unity, Justice and Development. I would like to express special gratitude to the OIC General Secretariat for the preparation of this meeting. I also would like to congratulate the Republic of Niger on the successful completion of chairmanship of the 47th session of the OIC Council of Foreign Ministers. I wish all participants of this meeting a productive work for the prosperity of our Ummah. Dear colleagues, today on global scale, the world is going through a challenging period and undergoing significant changes. Military conflicts, confrontation between the West and the East, the Ukrainian crisis, the consequences of the pandemic, religious intolerance, instability in the financial and commodity markets, all of these have a negative impact on the performance of the global economy and security. We observe the continuation of such trends as multipolarity, economic globalization, informational advancement of society, multi culturalism and transformation of the system of global governance and world order. The connectivity and interdependence of states is increasing and we see growing trends of uh, redistribution of the global balance of forces and increasing demand of global community for leadership related to the interest of peaceful and progressive development. Meanwhile, the situation with global and regional security is becoming more and more complicated with each passing day. Challenges and threats are running rampant. The hybrid confrontation is expanding and fake news has become widespread, inciting ethnic, racial and religious discord, thus even further exacerbating the regional conflicts. These are followed by entrancing traditions of unilateral approaches to addressing international issues, that is to, through the use of force. Such development contributes to growing practices of interference in the internal affairs of other states, in frightening of the rights of sovereign advancement and simultaneously regional international cooperation. This, this ultimately hinders the progress of humankind and destroys trust as the foundation of stable peace. All these risks and threats are relevant for the Islamic world as well. Today, more than ever, the countries of the Islamic world and the OAC member states need unity and must defend their interest and position to preserve common values and provide all possible support and necessary assistance. And I believe that the subject of today's summit highlights the importance of this idea. Nowadays, Kazakhstan is creating a concept of new Kazakhstan. Recently, President Tokayev announced the large-scale and meaningful reforms which cover almost all areas of life of the country. They include initiatives aimed at of political liberalization, plurality and openness. In the sphere of the economic, the reforms are focused on the tackling monopolization improving uh, living standards and ensuring that all citizens feel the benefits of our growing economy. Societal reforms uh, are aimed at improving health and education of the nation as well as other sectors. Kazakhstan today fully supports international efforts to ensure regional security and sustainable development of the countries of Eurasia. The ongoing global and regional processes require a collective decision regarding res resolute reunification of war conflicts, confrontation and choosing the path of peace, dialogue and focusing on joint development. Against this backdrop, 
as intergovernmental forum that brings together 27 member states, nine observers, and more than half of the world population with the established political dialogue, conference on interaction, and confidence building measures in Asia has a potential to become an effective tool for joint confrontation of new challenges and ensuring security and stability in the region. The key priority of Kazakhstan chairmanship at the SICA process is the transformation of the conference into a full-fledged international organization. Conversion into an international organization will significantly expand the capacity of the SICA and increase array of tools for practical cooperation between its member states. Within its chairmanship, Kazakhstan will hold the sixth SICA summit in Nur Sultan on the 12th and 13th of November this year, which marks the 30th anniversary of the conference. This event aims to propel the SICA into a new level of institutional development. At the initiative of Kazakhstan, the Code of Conduct towards achieving the world free of terrorism was developed within the UN and opened for signature in 2018. It has now been signed by 89 countries. Since 2017, our capital has hosted 17 rounds of the Astana process talks on Syria, aimed at facilitating the efforts of the international community to resolve the prolonged conflict. Kazakhstan, like many OIC member states, is concerned about the situation in Afghanistan. Socioeconomic and financial issues need to be addressed urgently to prevent large-scale humanitarian crises in the region. Kazakhstan contributes within its capacity to the efforts of the world community to stabilize the situation in Afghanistan. We regularly provide humanitarian aid to the Afghan population, implement national and international programs to train Afghan youth, including girls, in educational institutions of Kazakhstan. In 2020, the Kazaid Official Development Assistance Agency was established to assist the countries of Central Asia and Afghanistan in promoting the Sustainable Development Goals. The opening in Almaty City of the temporary remote office of UNAMA was a sign of the recognition of the role Kazakhstan and the organization's trust in our country. I would also like to emphasize the timelines of the extraordinary meeting of the OIC Council of Foreign Ministers on Humanitarian Situation in Afghanistan held in Salamabad on 19 of December 2021 which resulted in the adoption of the several practical decisions, including the launch of the Afghanistan Food Security Program under the aegis of the Islamic Organization for Food Security, and the establishment of the Humanitarian Trust Fund under the aegis of the Islamic Development Bank. In this regard, I call on the OIC Secretariat to assist the IOFC in the prompt launching the Afghanistan Food Security Program and the OIC member states to make generous contribution to this program. Regretfully, conflicts and military clashes continue among the Muslim countries today. The events in Yemen, Syria and several African states have become a matter of concern. Therefore, we believe that the initiative of Islamic rapprochement remains relevant for peace and harmony in the Islamic world. Kazakhstan reaffirms its unwavering position for just and comprehensive solution to the Palestinian question on the basis of relevant resolutions of the UN Security Council and the UN General Assembly in accordance with the two states for two nations principle. Moreover, we reiterate the OIC principle position on the Jammu and Kashmir dispute for peaceful settlement in accordance with the relevant United Nations Security Council. We are convinced that the promoting the ideology of tolerance, mutual understanding and cultural diversity is the key to combating hatred and discrimination. An example of interfaith dialogue is the Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religious, which has been held in Kazakhstan since 2003 and is attended by the leaders of the Islamic world and the Secretary General of the OIC. The next sixth Congress will be held in September 2022 in Kazakhstan. Distinguished participants, in the face of the new challenges, the further transformation of the organization is an important issue. Therefore, we need to swiftly conclude the process of reforming of the IC. 
In this context, we are grateful to Saudi Arabia, Turkey and Bangladesh for their efforts and contribution for the holding of two expert group meetings on comprehensive reform of our organization. The combat against the COVID-19 pandemic and overcoming its consequences are still among the pressing issues on our cooperation agenda. At the current stage, I would like to emphasize the importance of uniting our efforts in the combat against the pandemic and in the exchange of vaccines. In addition, Kazakhstan, within its activity in the UN, initiated the establishment of the International Agenda for Biology Safety, which in future will contribute to the prevention of biological threats and the exchange of information on dangerous diseases. Comprehensive support for this initiative will allow our countries to take timely measures in the future. The pandemic, more than anything else, showed the urgent need for the development of science and technology in the Muslim world and beyond. At the first YC Summit on Science and Technology held in September 2017 in Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan initiated the establishment of the YC 15 group, which unites 15 leading Muslim countries in the field of science and technology to promote the potential of our Ummah in these areas. This year, Kazakhstan intends to hold a meeting of ministers of the OIC 15 group member states responsible for education, science and technology. This step would also again demonstrate the need to consolidate efforts in the development of our own advanced science and technology as an important factor in achieving peace and prosperity. Distinguished colleagues, Today, many countries, including the Islamic world, are facing acute issue of ensuring food security due to the complex of geopolitical situation in the world and climate change. Many countries in Africa and Middle East are sounding the alarm and are requesting our help in providing essential products. Some countries are experiencing famine due to the crop failures last year. We are ready to cooperate in this area and consider it important to revitalize the Islamic Organization for Food Security and to use its potential to ensure access to food supply for countries in need. To date, 36 of the 56 OIC countries have joined this organization and only 17 countries have ratified its charter. We call on the members of the OIC to actively engage in the activities of the International Organization for Food Security. Last but not least, I invite distinguished delegation to support the resolution on granting the Organization of Turkic States the observer status in the OIC, which will be discussed this afternoon in the special committee. As a founding member of the, this organization, Kazakhstan is interested to enhance cooperation with important international organizations such as OIC. And we believe that strong partnership between OIC and different Asian regional organizations will increase the Islamic solidarity in the international arena and open a new avenue of cooperation. Availing this opportunity, I would like to inform that the recently, on the 12th March this year, there was the early presidential election in the Turkmenistan, which, uh, according to the international observers, was held in the fair, free and competitive atmosphere. As a result of election, His Excellency Mr. Serdar Berdum Mohamedov, with the support of 73% of the electorate, has become a new president of Turkmenistan. Also, I will this opportunity to express on behalf of the Asian group uh, the hurtful congratulations to the government and the people of Pakistan on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the independence of, uh, of the Republic. And I wish uh, peace and prosperity to the brotherly people of Pakistan. In conclusion, allow me to express the hope that all OIC will continue to advance its goal and objectives for the benefit of the entire Muslim Ummah. I wish all participants fruitful work at today's event and thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency, for your insightful remarks. I now request His Excellency Mr. Otman Jarandi, Foreign Minister of the Republic of Tunisia, 
to make his speech. He will be speaking on behalf of the Arab group of the OIC member states.